Hi there, my name is Hunter and I'm an Applications Engineer specializing in CamWorks and SOLIDWORKS here at Hawkridge Systems. I'd like to welcome you to Part 1 of the CamWorks Assembly Machining 101 series of videos. This series is intended for a CamWorks user who already has a good grasp of programming individual parts and is looking to increase their productivity and flexibility by moving to programming in the context of a SOLIDWORKS assembly. In this video, I'm going to just scratch the surface and introduce some of the fundamental concepts that are essential to your success in assembly machining, such as what is assembly machining, how do you define your machine, how to define a machine coordinate system, defining the parts which you'll be machining, defining your stock, managing your setups, managing your features, using rotary axes for indexing, and defining work coordinate offsets. Keep in mind, I will be following up with uh, future parts of this video that will cover some of the more advanced topics in assembly machining. So first off, what is assembly machining? Assembly machining is a feature in CamWorks that allows the user to program in an assembly file rather than in a part file. But keep in mind that this is an assembly file that will be used strictly by the machinist or the programmer, and it's not the same as the assembly file that the designer uses or the assembly file that the part actually goes into in real life. Some key advantages are that in assembly machining, you can machine multiple parts or multiple setups of the same part simultaneously, thus saving machine runtime. Also, it gives you more options for defining your stock, such as sharing a common piece of stock between multiple parts. It also allows you to simulate the actual machining environment, so you can model up your table, your clamps, your vices, and that way you can actually run a, a toolpath simulation and check to make sure that you're not having any collisions. And this is a very critical step in four and five axis simultaneous machining. Also, assembly machining allows you to use subroutines in your G-code. So if your post and your controller support it, we can output subroutines in two and a half and three axis machining operations. So let's get to work. In front of me here, I have an assembly that contains uh, four simple parts, and it's pretty much just a number cube, and I like using this just because it gives me a quick way of identifying what faces I'm talking about. So here's our number one face, here's our number four face, etc. So the first step is I need to define my machine coordinate system. Now, in three-axis machining, the actual location of this coordinate system isn't that important as long as you're eventually going to output your G-code using work coordinate offsets. But if you're doing four- and five-axis simultaneous machining, this coordinate system is actually going to become your machine rotary zero point, and its location is absolutely critical. So the way I like to define a coordinate system, or what I would say is a pretty fail-safe method that will probably work just about every time, is to use a sketch. So in this case, I'll just sketch out what I want to be my x and my y axes. So here's an x, here's a y, and I'll leave this sketch underdefined because, like I said, all I'm really doing with this sketch in three axes is defining my, uh, my spindle directions and my x, y, z directions. So now switching to the assembly tab, go to reference geometry and coordinate system, and I'll pick the vertex where those two lines intersect as my, uh, my x, y, z, zero. My x-axis will be this line, my y-axis will be this line, and I just want to double check to make sure that my z-axis is actually pointing in the proper direction. All right, that's all I'm going to do with that sketch, so we can go ahead and hide it, and I'll turn on view of coordinate systems so that we can select it graphically. Switching over to the CamWorks tab, I'll select my machine, so I want to make sure, first of all, that I select the proper machine. And the really important step here is to go to the Setup tab and choose that coordinate system that I just defined. And that is going to become my fixture coordinate system. Now I need to select what parts I'll be machining. So I'll double click on my part manager. And I'll select in the order in which I want the parts to be machined. So whatever order the parts appear right here in this list is the order that the features will get replicated. Meaning if I cut a pocket, pocket number one, it will first be machined on object number one, and then it will secondly be machined on object number two, and then on object number three, so on and so forth. I can manage this order simply by dragging and dropping. Now if I wanted to machine a individual part differently than the rest of the identical parts, I can choose that particular part 
and say split instance, and that will treat it as a uh, completely different part, even though they are identical. And this is also where we'd select whether or not we want to format our new code using subprograms for like parts and like features. All right, so once I've added my parts, a few things happen in my feature tree here. Notice that at the top level, we still see just our machine and our part manager, but now we are given access to our stock manager. So if I double click on the stock manager, let's look at some options that we see. Just like in part mode, we have our material list. And we have the same options that we're used to, such as bounding box, extruded sketch, and STL file. But notice there's a new option in assembly mode where you can use a SOLIDWORKS part to represent your stock. Also, if you'd like, you can choose parts and have them share a common piece of stock. So if I click on these three parts holding the control key down, I can come down to the bottom and say they share a common stock. And now we see the preview where there's actually a piece of stock bridging all three components. If I want to add offsets to this bounding box, it works just like in part mode where the X, Y, Z directions listed here are using the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system, not my machine coordinate system. So if I want a little extra material up here on the top, I'm going to put it in the positive Y direction. And we can see now we get a little extra material up on the top there. So now I define my stock, let's start programming. I do all my programming work underneath the part manager. And the part manager is going to list every unique component that gets machined. So in this case, I only have one, uh, I have multiple instances of all the same part, so I only get one part listed here. If I expand this further, the feature manager is well where I'll actually be doing my programming and adding my features. And the instances shows me all the different identical instances of that particular top-level part that we're machining. So to insert a setup, I'll right-click on my feature manager, say insert mill part setup. And just like in part mode, we can select the direction in which this setup is oriented. But differently than in part mode is in assembly mode, we also want to select our origin at the same time. So I'll pick this upper left-hand corner. Hit OK. Now, if these parts were programmed individually in part mode, I could right-click on the part and say import part data. And that will bring all of the setup information and the features and operations into my assembly. Otherwise, I can continually or I can continue manually machining or manually programming by adding features or recognizing features on those individual setups. So now we have one setup, and we automatically recognized one feature. It's a regular pocket. Notice that in uh, this list where the feature manager is, we're doing the programming strictly on the first instance of that, of that part. So this is the first instance that I selected in my part manager. Down here at the bottom, we see a setup that appeared, setup one. Setup one is not the same as mill part setup one over here. Setup 1 is an actual machine setup, and in a three-axis machine that does not have any rotary axis, we're only allowed to have one setup. So that's why it's important to make sure that my machine coordinate system is pointing in the right direction, because my setup for the machine is only allowed in three-axis to look straight down the z-axis in the machine coordinate system. So anything that we cannot see from this view will not be added to this machine setup. For example, Let's add a second setup. So I'll right click and add a new mill part setup. Maybe let's do the number four face. And once again, I'll point out that I'm only doing my, adding my operations and my features on this particular part. Just to be different, let's put the origin on the bottom right hand corner. And we will add a, or we'll recognize features on that setup. So now I have two setups for the part but once again, we still only have one setup for the machine. Now that one setup for the machine is doing irregular pocket one three times because it sees three instances when we're looking down the machine Z axis. And it also machines irregular pocket two 
only one time because it can see a regular pocket too from the top view. Now, features will automatically replicate every time the machine can see a duplicate instance of that feature. And sometimes that's useful, sometimes that's not. Let me show an example where that might not be advantageous to us. Let me add a face feature. And my face feature is going to automatically use the stock expense for this particular part. Now let me update my stock. For some reason, my face feature is not capturing the entire extent of the stock. So let's just make sure I did everything right here. We have a piece of stock right here that is common to these three components. And we have a second piece of stock that is separate for this part. And if we edit my face feature, there we go. All right, so my face feature is going to take off all of the stock for these three components. But if we look down here on the setup, we see that it gets replicated three times. And this is not ideal because we're actually machining a whole bunch of air here. And it might actually cause a collision over here on this next part. So what I can do is I can expand this face feature and I see that it's being replicated three times. What I can do is I can right click on an instance and hit suppress. Or I can multiple select instances with the shift or control keys. So now I'm only doing that face feature one time, even though the machine sees three possible instances of that feature. Now, if you have a rotary axis, you can activate that in the machine dialog. So if I double click on the machine, I can say we're doing indexing about a fourth axis. And we allow to rotate around the X axis. That'll be the machine X axis. And I even get a little preview of exactly what's happening. Once I do that, notice now I'm given three machine setups. That's because the machine is automatically trying to rotate to mill part setup one and mill part setup two. And in order to do that, it needs to come in from the top and the rear in order to access side number one on this component and then the front in order to access side number four on these three components. But because I've chosen the x-axis as a rotary axis, if I add a setup that is coming in from a direction that cannot be rotated to, such as the number two face, and we put a feature on there, Notice that that feature, a regular pocket three, never got added to this list because the machine cannot rotate about the y-axis in order to access the number two face. So once we have all of the features that we're looking for, we can right-click on a setup and generate operation plan. We can also right-click on the machine and generate the operation plan for every setup. And the last step I'm going to do here is define our work coordinate offsets. So if I double click on a setup, first we'll go to the origin tab. And by default, it wants to output by the setup origin. Now what that means is all of my X, Y, Z coordinates in my G code will be in relationship to this machine coordinate system. Sometimes you might want that, sometimes you might not. If we're going to be using work coordinate offsets in order to machine these different parts, we don't want that. So I'm going to say part setup origin. And now we see that our G code is all in relationship to the origins that I selected when I defined our setups for those individual parts. If we need to rotate our axes, we can do that here. And the last step is we'll go to our offset tab. We're going to use word coordinate offsets. I'll choose a sign. And Camworks automatically assigns the word coordinate offsets for my four parts. If it chooses a work coordinate offset that you don't want, maybe G54 is reserved, something, reserved for something else and I need that to be G58, I can just select that item, change it to the offset I want, and hit change. Now I'm ready to continue generating my toolpath and posting my code just like I would do in part mode. 
Thank you for watching. That concludes part one of the Assembly Machining 101 series. So, so far I've shown you just the basic setup and fundamentals of working in Camworks in an assembly. Keep an eye out for future parts of this video showing more advanced features. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel so we can keep you up to date on the latest tips and tricks in Camworks and SolidWorks. Happy machining!